right, thank you. So yeah, this is Ross Gerber on CNBC on last call. And what's what's interesting, by the way, before I even just play this is CNBC did not clip this out to put on YouTube. So the only way you could find it is going on CNBC Pro on their site and logging in and finding it that way, or you know by going through AdBlocker or something like that. So it's interesting that they did not clip this part out on YouTube as well. Ross Gerber joining us now. Uh, Ross, I mean, listen, uh, it, it, terrible day. Just a very disappointing day on, on so many levels. Very troubling without getting into the, the meat of that content. I'm not entirely sure what he means by very disappointing day, to be honest, because Elon specifically clarified his his positions. Uh, are you selling your Tesla stock? No, I, I'm not selling my Tesla stock. I'm an advisor for, you know, lots of people who own Tesla stock. And my job is to invest in great companies. And in, in many of my clients care about what they own. And so when I have to spend my day basically either talking people out of Tesla stock or in a lot of cases, I just can't talk them out of it anymore. And not to mention just deflecting flat. I've just never had this with any company I've ever invested in ever in my life where the CEO of the company himself does so many detrimental things that it, it just like is destroying the brand. It, and, and it so Ross, interestingly enough, also had the same argument, if you guys remember, when Elon went on this political diatribe, what, six, eight months ago, something like that. Do you guys remember when Ross said, no one in California is ever buying a Tesla ever again? The brand reputation is over. Um, he kind of had the same arguments, and that's when he was running for the board of directors of Tesla. And it's just, nobody on the board is going to stop him, that's for sure. But yeah, the bottom line is, that's what's happening. And I'm, I'm just not going to mince words about it anymore as a shareholder. It's absolutely outrageous, his behavior in the damage he's caused to the brand. Simple as that. You know, he's not just the CEO. I mean, he, he's the founder and builder and face of the company. But many companies, their founders, their time comes and they move on. I don't know oh, okay. if that's the time now, but it sounds like you're saying that Tesla might be a better company in terms of just the way people react to its product and maybe to its stock if Elon Musk, who built it up, were oh. to perhaps step aside. Oh. You know, the truth is, Sully, he already has stepped aside. This isn't about me calling for him to step aside. He has stepped aside as CEO of Tesla. None of his actions are for the benefit of Tesla. At the okay. In the chat, throw in the chat. Has Elon, in your opinion, mentally... That's what the argument he's making. Already stepped aside in your eyes as a Tesla shareholder, let's say, um, to Tesla. Has Elon in your eyes already stepped away from Tesla? Yes or no? Throw in the chat. At this moment, it's all about Twitter and what he can tweet and how many people he can piss off. He actually thinks in his weird world that the things he says matters. But so that was specifically, and I see everyone saying no, no, no. Okay, so specifically, it was that point right there, if you guys caught that, where he said, Elon in his little world thinks that he actually, what he says actually matters, right? I found that very interesting because basically what he's saying is that no one listens to what Elon has to say, which is the entire premise of his argument. This entire premise is Elon should stop saying really weird things things that we can all have to dig into the nuance of because people listen to him, right? People listen to him. And then on the other side of the mouth, Ross says, no one actually listens to what Elon has to say. And so a couple good comments here. Oh, oops. A couple good comments here. Hold on. There it is. Uh, maybe it says Elon might not be racist or anti-Semitic, but he does support popular conspiracy theory about Jews hitting whites. Plain simple to do this. And then Richard also, where was Richard comments? No, but it also, but stupid comments that are not helpful. So that's the other thing is that you can, you know, there's arguments to be made that should Elon tamp, like really taper down what he has to say in public. And this is where the argument of free speech or Elon is a CEO, so he should really taper what he has to say in a professional environment. That argument that you see online is if I had to pinpoint it, that it is like, that is it right there, right? That is it right there. If Elon's an average private citizen, doesn't really own Tesla or SpaceX, a Neuralink he doesn't isn't Elon basically what he says really I mean I don't think anyone really cares about but the fact that he represents so many brands that we might be shareholders of the question now comes in should he have to taper down what he has to say 
in the name of protecting brand reputation. And that is in and of itself, the argument. What he's really doing is destroying everything he's built. And that's the super frustrating thing as a shareholder. And just as an investor, one has to look out at the long-term future of Tesla and say, if the CEO is willing to do all this stuff and nobody can stop them, founder, whatever you want to call them, well, yeah. what's going to happen to Tesla over the next 10 years? Are they going to achieve their mission if the CEO isn't actually the CEO? Because he's certainly not acting as the CEO of Tesla. So there you go. Ross says right there that he doesn't think Elon is actually acting as Tesla CEO today, basically implying that Elon is doing no work when it comes to Tesla. And all he's talking about is weird conspiracy theories and advertising on X, which is a whole nother debacle here. And I saw the Martin had a really good comment on it. And we're going to get into that in a second. Well, you know, there's probably many, many people out there that are looking to buy Tesla's that have no idea this is going on, right? They're not on X. They're not watching us now. They just want what they view as the best in class vehicle. Mm. But you and I all- I would argue, by the way, what he just said is probably the majority of people. The majority of people really have no idea what's happening outside from a couple of headlines or what their buddy might say. But for the most part, when they go shopping for, for a new car, I mean, they're looking at specs. That is, that is probably it. Also probably know people, I know I do personally, who've said, I was gonna buy a Tesla, but I just can't get on board with anything having to do with Elon Musk. You can disagree with that point of view all you want. Many people still love him, but I think he is, he has driven away some buyers, I, I think. It's not just some buyers. And this is what I say, like to blame interest rates or whatever, we're past that now. We know just because Tesla's forced to continually cut prices on their cars to now a ridiculously cheap level to sell them, that this is 100% because of sentiment. It's clearly the best vehicle anybody could buy for the price. I mean, there's no doubt about it. But whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. What did he just say? Let's let's just let's just listen to that one more time. To now a ridiculously cheap level to sell them, that this is hundred percent because of sentiment. It's clearly the best vehicle anybody could buy for the price. It's clearly the best vehicle anyone could buy for the price. It's clearly the best best vehicles anyone could buy for the price model y is like a prius now rivians are sweet huh okay anyway sorry i just thought i'd i thought there was an i thought there was an echo in the room so, i mean listen uh it, oh sorry Ron. <laughs> i mean there's no doubt about it but why would you have to discount the vehicle over and over again other than the ceo's talking people out well, of buying it so i think we can move beyond this you know, sort of concept. It's a reality that people are avoiding the brand because of Elon and it's hurting the company and it's hurting the shareholders. And worst of all, it's hurting the current owners of Tesla vehicles who've lost a tremendous amount of value in the resale. Okay. So this comment here from RC saying Mar market manipulation, Ross just wants to buy more shares. I, I I really don't think so. It, it, in my opinion, I don't think it's, it's that elaborate or anything. Um, just because I don't think the market's moving on what Ross is saying, right? No, no, no offense. Um, uh, but also, at the end of the day, I think what Ross is speaking to is not is being a proxy for his clients more than he is trying to manipulate any sort of market price, in my opinion. Value of our vehicles. I think it's somewhere. And T. Nelly, I've, I've I've marked your questions uh, and I've starred them so I can come back. Between to them. twenty and forty <laughs> billion has been lost by Tesla owners, the people who bought Tesla cars and support Tesla have lost a lot of money in resale value because of this. And, and this is what I'm- I mean, they've lost resale value because the cost of, or, or, the, or the price of the car keeps coming down. That is the problem. It's not really what Elon is saying when it comes to resale values of the car. Well, I, say, I think- It's not a personal yeah, thing. To be it's, fair- it's Dollars and cents. Yeah, to be fair, that there is a slide there in, in a lot of the EVs because the battery concerns, but to your point is well taken. It's a different price point. I get it, unless you're looking at a Model S, but does this benefit Rivian and the $90,000 <laughs> pickup truck? Oh, uh, all right. Well, it benefits Rivian in a core demo for Tesla. It's obviously Rivian's market isn't the mass Model Y market, but it certainly had to head competitor to the Model S and X. And, you know, these are major products for Tesla that are profitable. They, they might not be scaled to the level of Model Y, but what's happening is when consumers who can afford, you know, a nicer car are making choices, they're choosing Rivians and you're seeing them all over LA. And it, it is what it is. And people are choosing other vehicles and, and they have 
you know, I, I think Tesla's competition is still well behind them, but people are considering vehicles that they would have never considered because of this. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. My personal opinions aside, as an investor, I just want to try to understand how his actions benefit shareholders or Tesla car owners in any way. So that is, a, I'm going to make sure nothing else plays here afterwards. That IBM is, announced. So that is the crux of the issue. And you know what's interesting, by the way, I just wanted to say this. It's, I want to be clear. It's not about, oh, this person supports Rivian, therefore they're wrong. No, it's not about that. You can support whatever EV manufacturer you want. I don't care, right? But it's when you specifically go and you're so gung-ho about something, let's say a product, and then something as emotional as someone, like a founder of that company, saying something you don't like, and now you don't like that product because you think another product's actually better, it makes me devalue what you had to say about the product to begin with. That is the issue, right? And there's a subtle nuance between that and me saying, oh, because you don't like Elon, you cannot like Tesla now. Fair enough. If that's if that's if that flows your boat, go for it. But specifically, and I don't know why this this um it just the 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 illogicalness of just of, of this just irks me a little bit. But hating on the product and saying Tesla suck, actually, they're all Priuses. The Model Y is a Prius now. Uh, Rivians are, are where it's at because of an, uh, something that the founder said to me is just it strikes me as oh you you were just playing the whole time like you didn't actually believe anything that you were saying were you that 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 is it I don't care if you like Rivians or like it doesn't matter to me but it's just the the fact that you were saying that you love the product and then now you hate the product because of something irrelevant to the product that is it that's what strikes me the wrong way that like that is it. And again, at the end of the day, people have free speech. They can do whatever they want, ironically enough, as we're talking about it.